guys welcome back to my channel so you know I'm still with the Alicia Keys movement nobody should judge me so anyways I know I didn't post on Thursday because you know life came up but then I'm doing today's own and for today I actually didn't want to do this video right I actually didn't want to pitch these two things together because you know you can't actually put them together and in case I wonder what I'm putting together I'm actually putting Thor and Justice League I'm actually going to compare the two movies and I'm one of the people I really hate putting like pitching DC and Marvel together because I feel like they are two different like they have two different visions and have two different voices but I mean if they didn't want us to compare it they shouldn't have released the movies 14 days between each other so I mean hey it's not my fault I'm just a mouthpiece so my name is Ifa Alabi please subscribe to my channel and then let's just do this you know which one was the better movie Thor Ragnarok or Justice League first of all I'm going to start with Thor Ragnarok so I watched Thor when it got like when it was released I watched Thor and my first thought on Thor was that it was really really funny I'm not a Thor person like Thor hasn't been my favorite Avenger like I'm a more of a Captain America person, but I still decided to give Thor a try because I saw the trailers so look good And then I mean it had Tessa Thompson in it <laughs> And I've, I've become a huge favorite of Tessa Thompson especially after Dear White People So I was like, okay, let me just watch this because of her So all in all it was a very funny movie like it was a good movie But it was a very funny movie. So apart from Tessa Thompson I like Idris Elba too, so even though he he didn't come a lot in this movie, I mean he was still in the movie, so all in all it was great. I also like the fact that they put Hulk inside the movie. I like, and you know in the sh in the trailers when you saw like the preview for Hulk, I was quite excited to see like how they make him you know blend in a new world because you know he's used to Earth and this is Asgard. So it was quite interesting to see how Hulk when he turned back to Bruce Banner, his interaction like being in this world that of being on this universe planet earth how how do you classify as god being on this place that isn't exactly his comfort zone and also seeing him you know transition from being hulk to bruce banner was great i haven't seen the original hulk movie like nobody should like come and judge me but i haven't seen the original hulk movie like this has been like the funniest marvel movie well apart from guardians of the galaxy but then at some aspects of the movie i could have sworn that it was Guardians of the Galaxy, like how funny it was, that's how funny Guardians of the Galaxy was. So at some point I felt like they were overcompensated with the funny, like I felt like, I don't know, I think that they were trying so hard to be funny because there's so many times that I just burst out laughing, I was like, I'm actually watching Thor, isn't Thor supposed to be like the more serious of the two worlds? But that's what it is. And my next thought about the movie was the villain. You see, there's the thing. The villain had the opportunity, like this was the time for me to like, I thought this villain would be like the person to be afraid of because, you know, this is Ragnarok, so it's supposed to be like the end of days or like the end of the era. So when the woman, Hera, what's the villain's name? When Hera, when she was revealed to be uh, Thor's bigger sister and she like, she's this big badass, I thought for sure I was going to see her, you know, do something extraordinary. And what she did, it's not like it wasn't anything, but it was still not as much as I thought it would be because she killing all the people, she killing all the bodyguards, they were normal. I wasn't frightened of her. Like, you know, the sense of, yeah, so poor, like she is someone that is very formidable. You're supposed to be afraid of her. I did not get that sense at all because in the fight scene, when Valkyrie was narrating how they were able to defeat her the first time around, I thought that sequence was really cool and I thought we we're going to see more of that sequence but alas they won't let us have good things in life but I so I thought that like we we're going to see how formidable of a person she was but then all I got from it was like some woman who had a vendetta to crush not like someone who was like I'm coming to do that and that and that and that has been my main problem with Marvel like if you ask me like I love Marvel movies but their villains have al always been sub part it's like at the end of the day when you finish watching it you feel like into a new any like is this all there is to the villain because if you're watching like you expect that by the time you're like man that villain was crazy but it was still very meh about it but all in all was it a good movie of course it was a good movie it was enjoyable i like the way they set up for 
Avengers Infinity War. I like the way they set up for the Infinity War. I like how like they are trying to put all those places, all those things in places. And my favorite part of the movie was the beginning. The cameos by Matt Damon, Luke Hemsworth, and Sam Neil. I thought they were amazing. Like what? What else in the cinema? I was like, wait, is that? Is that? I don't know. That's what I was doing the whole time. Like, am I mistaken? But I wasn't, and I'm glad I was vindicated. But all in all, I also like that cameo by Doctor Strange. I didn't think we were going to see Doctor Strange in this movie, but then he was in this movie. And so, you know, I'm actually waiting for Infinity War because I'm sure it's, I think it's going to be like the last movies for most of the people that started it. So, like Chris Evans, most of them, it's going to be like their last movie so that they're going to give way for new people to come into the franchise, which is pretty good. So, Thor Ragnarok was amazing, it was really good. Cool. It was, I like the effect. I like this. Oh no, wait, there's something I didn't like about it. When they went to Norway, I, I said I wasn't going to do spoilers, right? But I think I have to. So when they went to Norway, the set for Norway, I was just there. I was like, who are you trying to convince that you're yeah, in an actual country? Like, I mean, honestly, who, who, who are you trying to convince with that set piece? Marvel, Disney, you people. What is it? Like, but. Does it deserve its Rotten Tomato score? Yes, actually it does. It really does. Like, it's a movie that you actually enjoy because the second Thor, that's Dark World, it was not nice. It wasn't as nice as I thought it would be. But this one actually redeems all the Thor movies. And for this year, superhero movies, I mean, hey, it was a good, it was a good input by Marvel. Will it rate as one of the top 10 Marvel movies? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. But... It's a strong contender. That's all we want out of life, to be a strong contender. So Thor Ragnarok was a good movie. So then let's go to Justice League. So this is my first thought after watching Justice League. You know when you feel a test and your teacher is like, you know, you are a better student, like you can do better. So go back and go and rewrite the test and bring it. That's my thought after I finished watching Justice League. It was like after the whole brouhaha around Batman vs Superman, decided to go back and be like, we can do better. And they came out of Justice League. So, full disclosure, I'm a DC person. Like, I'm a full-blown DC person. I fuck, like, I really fuck with Marvel. Like, I really like Marvel movies a lot. Like, nobody can tell me anything about it. Like, I really like Marvel movies a lot. But, at heart, I'm a DC girl. Like, I really, really love DC. That's why I've, that's why they are, the way the movies have been very disappointing. I've taken it to heart more than I should. So, Justice League. Justice League was a good movie. I mean, it was way better than Batman vs Superman. It was way better than Man of Steel. Was it better than Wonder Woman? Mm, no. No. I don't think Justice League was better than Wonder Woman. I think Wonder Woman was the better DC movie this year. And let me tell you my big thing about Justice League. I sincerely didn't think that they were supposed to be all the other League members. Like, in my honest opinion, What's the point of Aquaman in the movie? Apart, like, from providing, you know, one-line quips and everything. Flash was the big thing he did in the movie. I don't, like, I didn't get... Aquaman and Flash was like, they, for us to just see that, yes, we are bringing these people in and they are part of the Justice League. It wasn't necessary. Honestly, honestly, it wasn't necessary. The, both of them weren't really necessary. And so let me get into, like, my general thoughts about Justice League before I break it down. My first thought about Justice League, it was funny. Why was it funny? That's my first thing. Like, why did they, like, I guess that Zack Snyder left the movie, so it was, like, taken over by Joss Whedon, who did the first Avengers, and he's done a couple of Marvel movies. So I get why he tried to inject this whole thing into it, but why was it funny? Like, at some point, what? Like, there were some lines and clips. I was like, no. Like, we can, you can be funny, but this one line funny p business what is it what is that about and also the post credit scenes since when did dc start giving us post credit scenes that's a marvel thing even with marvel we don't want to see post credits there when you're done you're done we don't want to see what is coming up next show us that in the trailer or leave it to the next movie so i did not like the post credit scenes when i saw the post credits i was like oh my god whose idea was it and if it's your idea just Whedon. no also, the next thing about the movie I didn't like was it was too short. I felt like they tried to like cancel, cancel so many things so that they limit it to less than two hours, which is like if you're giving us less than two hours and we still don't, and we still feel like there's more story to be told, why cut it? Like 
I felt like they should have just, you know, just done it and then we'll just watch it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the thought process went into less than two hours, but I, after watching Justice League, I felt like there's more to be told because the beginning, the first 45 minutes of they trying to, okay, this is Barry Allen, that's Arthur Curry, that's this, that's that. that. I was like, what's the rush? That's a, like that. I'm like, what's the rush? After that, I was like, why is why is there so much like why is a quick pace to get everybody together and then, eh. My favorite person, I mean, apart from Wonder Woman, which I mean, she's amazing, but apart from that was Victor Stone. I did not think I'd like Cyborg. But look at life. I, he was actually like the breakout star on it for me. Like, I thought he was really great as Cyborg. And even though, like, some of sometimes he came off a little bit very. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Flash, oh my. Like, you see. Like, no disrespect to Ezra Miller, but Grand Gaston is my barrier. I think because of the prejudice of watching the TV show, so I've become accustomed to Grand Gaston as Barry Allen. And Ezra Miller, because they didn't give Flash a lot of stuff to do, I still didn't connect with the Flash on Justice League. Ben Affleck, I, I really don't like Ben Affleck as Batman. I'm sorry, I know people like him. I really don't like Ben Affleck as Batman. I don't know it's because I don't like Ben Affleck, but I don't like him as Batman, so I didn't like Batman. So yeah, and also the villain. This is my thoughts, right? When the movie started, so you know, like when they did the cold open before the beginning credits, and like there was a sense of hopelessness and detachment. I actually thought that would be like the huge thing that they are going to fight hopelessness because right now Superman is dead, and so people don't have that sense of hope of goodness and everything. You know, I thought there was going to be like a little bit of xenophobia thrown in. There's going to be a little bit of racism and stuff. So I thought for sure what we we're going to battle was hopelessness. You know, the idea of hopelessness. So the whole time I was like, okay, this is going to be like, you know, something that's going to be battled out. So so that when the Justice League is unveiled, they're like, they're giving hope to people that like, you know, need it. But then they brought in Steppenwolf, which first of all, really i get he's a big villain in the dc universe but he was very misplaced in this movie but i was like where can we bring in some villain that will just you know need super i felt like they brought in stepping wolf just so that we'll have a catalyst to bring superman when there could have been so many huge things that will force superman or like that will make them bring superman back because Stepping Wolf, I did not like. I did not like the villain at all. I felt like the villain was just so overdone, and it was the villain also felt seriously like a Marvel thing. Because Marvel is the, the people that like the CGI thing. So like Wonder Woman, the way Wonder Woman's villain came, that's the same why I didn't like this villain too. I don't know. I thought Stepping Wolf, there was no need for there to have been Stepping Wolf. I don't know. Should I go to like some other villain or something? But I did not like the villain at all. And at, and at some points, the CGI felt unreal. First of all, we know CGI is unreal, but then it felt fake. So I was like, ah, no, 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 no. And also, the idea that the stepping wolf was after the motherboard, which is so much like the Infinity Stones. Why? That's my only question. Why give us a villain that is looking for? motherboards that are three different things that need to come together to rule the world that's just like the infinity stones from marvel dc why that's my only question to you people answer me you see at the end of the day people are going to compare dc versus marvel that is a given like at this point there's no two ways about that but when you try so hard to bring in some elements that are so glaring we start to question you like there was no need for the motherboard. That's why I'm like, Stepping Wolf wasn't necessary. If Stepping Wolf had come in later DC movies, great. But when he comes so close to when there's going to be Avengers Infinity War and when, you know, the just the Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, it kind of feels like you are stealing plot devices from Marvel. So, Justice League. I feel like if Justice League had just been Batman, Wonder Woman, with a little bit of Superman thrown in, it would have worked great. And then at the end, they would have gone to actually seen all of them and recruited them so that it's not the recruitment coming at the beginning but have come at the end so that you know that will set us up more to follow Aquaman, to follow Flash, to follow Cyborg. Is Justice League a good movie to watch? Yes please, please watch Justice League. It was way better than Batman vs Superman. That movie was an atrocity. Anytime I remember Batman vs Superman I cry a little bit inside. But to compare Thor Ragnarok and Justice League 
is that a comp like can you actually compare yes you actually can compare depending on what your likes are if you like if you are into the whole superhero genre you don't discriminate go for it watch both i mean i did watch both of them when it was released and it was great and let me before i before i end this video let me just say batman i really don't like ben affleck as batman and this batman was some hey how can a batman you just they can beat you like someone's daughter like they are beating you like they are their child so i don't know like justice league could have been better yes it could have been way better but was it good yes it was good was Thor good? Yes, Thor was good. Thor was funny. Thor has the Rotten Tomato score and everything. But Thor could it have been better. Yeah, it could have been better. But I don't know. For Marvel, because we've kind of seen a lot of things from them, I feel like trying, they overstepping is like a bit too much or not. I don't know. Depending on what your flavor is. But it's good. So Thor versus Justice League, they are both good movies. But Justice League isn't doing as great in the box office, mainly because, I don't know, I think people had too much expectations or had no expectations. I know, what kills more? So, I'm leaving this out to you guys. If you have seen Justice League, if you have seen Thor Ragnarok, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What were you like, oh my god, why did they bring this stuff into it? So me, what has been my purpose today is to just throw out questions to you people and tell you what I actually thought about each of them. So, they were both good movies. You know we can't live with that i mean if you can't live with that what else are we going to do anyway it's not like we can tell them to redo the movie but we can i don't know maybe so anyways my name is ifa labi thank you so much for tuning into my channel thank you for subscribing to my channel i mean i'm going to assume you have subscribed to my channel we have that understanding but don't we like we actually do have the understanding so whilst you're here please check out my other videos that are going to be here and i don't have a watch so i can't actually like show if you are subscribing or watching my other videos but i'm going to assume you are because i mean it's love between us right